Hello and welcome back to Kim's Cozy Corner. I'm Kim and thank you for joining us today. This is week nine of my seed starting series and today we are going to continue doing all the things we need to do in preparation for our 2023 garden. So come with me and let's get started. I want to thank you for stopping by to Kim's Cozy Corner. Our channel has been up and running for a little over two months and we have tons of information on indoor gardening, outdoor gardening, seed starting, cooking, do-it-yourself, preserving, lots of great information here. Please subscribe to the channel and hopefully there's information here that you can find useful. We are on week nine of our seed starting series. And in week nine, as you can see behind me, my indoor growing space is very full, very full. And I don't have any everything in there anymore. I've already started moving things out, uh, preparing them to be hardened off to go outside. Just real quick, you don't wanna take your seedlings from an indoor space under um, just regular lighting and immediately take them outside and put them in the ground or they will die. The shock of being outside with the weather, the sun, the temperatures, everything's so different that you really need to slowly introduce your plants to the outside. And there will be a whole video on that in the upcoming weeks. For today, I've picked those flats up and moved them upstairs in preparation for starting that process. We are going to start some more seeds. So I'll share with you what seeds I'm starting, but I'm not gonna show you the full process of putting them in and, and how to fill your seedling trays and all that kind of stuff because the earlier videos in this series explains that process wholly. So for now, the first thing I wanna do is share with you the very few items that we will be starting today. And I want to share a picture so you can see what it is. Not so much how I'm starting the seeds, but just what I'm starting now. We're on week nine. Um, we're in the middle of March and we are now finishing off those first few rounds of cold weather crops and starting to move into plants that only need a couple of weeks to germinate because they can stand a light frost. So we want to get those in the ground, excuse me, in the seedling trays and germinated so we can get them outside within the next three to four weeks or so. My last frost date for uh, Southwest Ohio, I'm in zone 6A. According to everything that I'm reading, my last frost date is the end of April, I don't know how real that is. So I usually think about the last frost being the last week in April, first week in May. Um, I try to give myself room just in case you get one of those freak winter storms or a heavy frost. With that last frost date being about six weeks out, I really need to get the rest of these vegetables started that need to be started at this time. So we are going to be starting today a couple more lettuces that I want to get started. And so when they're ready to transplant, I can transplant them right into the ground of my raised beds. So one of them is butter crunch. I didn't realize that I hadn't planted any butter crunch. I don't know how I missed that, but this is actually one of my favorite lettuce. Butter crunch is um, a heat tolerant um, variety that is slow to bolt. The leaves are soft and crisp, and these are also great for the square footage garden. So for those who are following the square foot garden method, which I do in my garden as well, which you'll get to see in the spring when I get out there, it fits perfectly into a space. It says you wanna start them indoors four weeks before transplanting out. And you can trans transplant these out with a light frost. So I need to get these started. I'm also going to be growing another uh, headed lettuce. It's called crisp head lettuce. It's a Hansen improved lettuce. And it's just an iceberg lettuce basically is what it is. 
Um, again, you want to start it about four weeks before you transplant it out. So now is the time for that. This will be like my fourth round of lettuce, but there is no, in, I do not intend to put any of that into my indoor garden for harvest now. This will be for the raised beds um, and getting those, one of the first plants that we get outside. The next item that I'm going to start now is another pak choy. And I know there's no pitcher, you know, Harris seeds, gurneys, and um, uh, what's the other one? Johnny's. They, they don't provide pitchers. So I'm going to put a picture right here of this particular pak choy. And it's a hybrid. Um, but here's the picture. I already have 12 pak choys. Um, growing in my indoor growing space in my green stock. If you don't know what a green stock is, check out my green stock. All things green stock video is a vertical tower um, is perfect for growing all kinds of vegetables. But I have it already in my indoor green stock. So I have 12 of them in there and I'm going to start harvesting those in about a week because I like to harvest them young. So once I harvest them, I'm going to need to be able to replace them with something else. And so that's where this next round of pak choy comes in. I will also be starting Brussels sprouts. Let's see if I can get this up or where you can see it. Um, interesting enough, I grew Brussels sprouts last year and I had so many, I gave them away. And so I had them in my garden. I gave them away to a coworker and my coworker harvested the most beautiful Brussels sprouts. I got none, not one. So um, I know the seeds are viable. They grew well for me last year. I just think I crowded them out too much in my garden. So uh, we'll be doing Brussels sprouts. And according to my tracker, my Excel tracker, um, I need to start my eggplant now, which it seems a bit early, but if I look at what it says here about eggplants, so this is the diamond eggplant. And I have a seed share pack of eggplants. Um, but if I read what it says about this, um, it says that you should start indoors six to eight weeks before the last frost. I am well under eight weeks for the last frost. So I'm in the middle of March. So that would have these ready to go out mid-May, um, which I think is great timing. And hopefully it'll have a nice size on it to give it a good start in the process. So we will be doing, again, let me show you a picture, diamond eggplant, as well as um, this eggplant from a seed share. I don't know what variety or type. I just know it's eggplant. I don't eat a lot of eggplant. I have a few recipes for eggplant. If there's anybody out there with some great eggplant recipes, please let me know because I want to eat more eggplant. I think it's a great replacement for meat uh, versus having to eat meat every day with every meal. So that's the eggplant. And then parsley. Um, parsley says put them outdoors four weeks before the last frost. So I'm going to grow two different types of parsley. They're from MI Gardener, which I tell you this year, I've had a hundred percent germination so far on all of MR Gardener seeds. So I will be growing both curly kale, excuse me, curly uh, parsley, as well as a flat leaf parsley. So that's all of my, you know, very small one-off type um, seeds that I'll be starting today. But I'm also starting this week my tomatoes. So you will get to see me start uh, 48 types of tomatoes later in the video. But I just wanted to let you know that I will be starting those today as well. But before I get any further in this video, I know what you're waiting on. I know you're waiting for the update from the last seven weeks. Here you go. 
this is our week nine seedling update. Let me show you how my young seedlings are doing. All of my lettuces are in this spot here. They look very healthy. In these areas over here, I have all cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower. And this area will be cleaned up and moved to start hardening off these plants as well as up potting some of the cabbages and the Napa cabbage in this space here. This Napa cabbage we have an issue with. I've tried to grow this every year now for three years in a row and every time I up pot this cabbage it bolts on me. So we will not be using this cabbage going forward. On this level down here, I have all of my herbs uh, growing nicely in this space. Everything looks really healthy. Last week we planted basil, two different name brands, and I'm glad that I did because this particular name brand did not germinate at all. But this basil here has broken ground and it looks really good. Here I have all of my celery and it's doing excellent. Nice, green, thick, healthy. The stems are nice and full. Behind there I have orange hat micro dwarf tomatoes. So I had two extra ones um, that wouldn't fit in my green stalk so I put them in this little pot here and they are doing great. In this pot here, I have some Merlot, Merlot, not sure how you pronounce it, lettuce that we will probably start harvesting this week. Down here, I have all of my peppers. And now my hab habaneros, habaneros, habaneros. And now my habaneros are germinating as well. It was a little slow to the party. All of the rest of my peppers have germinated and they're putting on their first true leaves. So we will be up potting those probably later this week. I also have two containers of begonias. It's a type of flower. And they haven't broken ground yet, but I don't expect them to because it takes up to 28 days. And I only have my heat mat set to 78. Uh, which is on the lower side for germination, but I am I don't want them to germinate too quickly and then I, I'm not ready for them to go outside. My rhubarb, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful back there. And some other seed has gotten in there and decided to germinate. We will hold on to it and see what it is. In the front here, I have collards that we are going to separate. Kale, two different times, I have a curly kale and a dinosaur kale. And then on the end here, this is a wavy mustard. And then I have a few tiny Tim tomato plants back there. I'm going to have to transplant them um, out of the small pot into a larger pot. We actually up potted these a week ago and I've already harvested off of these. So you'll see some missing leaves because we've already harvested them. Um, this is romaine. And this is dynamite. Look how pretty that is. It's a heading lettuce. We up potted a, about a week ago. Beautiful, beautiful. Even though we haven't talked about this, I am starting um, slips for sweet potatoes from sweet potatoes from last year and I have little leaves coming up. So you'll probably hear about those in a separate video very soon. We have onion. This whole area is all onion and they're doing great. We'll be ready to put those outside in about a month. This container here, we've actually harvested off of these as well and they are already coming back full. So I'm finally getting enough lettuce so that I'm not running out of lettuce throughout the week. These are the potatoes. They are well above the top of the pot now. 
just harvest this yesterday. So this was salad bowl. It's not dying. It's just where I cut it all off and we had it for dinner and it was delicious. Here's my larger pot of potatoes and they are doing really well. In this pot here, I started some broccoli and they are really filling out, getting some nice big leaves. They are really enjoying the space much better than those teeny Let's pots. move over to the green stalk. The top is all micro dwarf tomatoes, three different kinds, Red Robin, Tiny Tim, and Orange Hat, and they look great. This row here are all lettuces, and um, I did pull some of these lettuces off and included it in our salads this week. They are actually too dense, I believe. So I went ahead and thinned those out just yesterday. So I'm expecting them to start growing much bigger. This, the next two rows are lettuce and carrots. And again, we have been harvesting and enjoying these throughout the week where I cut some off just yesterday. And then at the very bottom are my bok choy. So we will be harvesting bok choy in maybe a week at most because I like them when they're young and small like this. So we will be harvesting those in the next week or so. That's it for my week nine seedling update. Everything's doing great and you're gonna see huge changes to this space in the next week or so. So as you can see, again, everything's healthy, everything's doing well. There's so many things that I need to up pot, which we're gonna do in this video here, but I'm not gonna show you hours and hours of up potting. I'll just show you a few minutes of a few things as I'm putting them through and up potting them to the next uh, size pot. So we're going to up pot all of those greens and those brassicas, but I'm not going to show you the details of that. I'm going to also go ahead and start these seedlings. And we will go ahead and take care of that now. If you're interested in knowing how to fill each of the seedling trays and how to plant your seeds, the depth of your seeds, please check out my seed starting weeks one and two for that information. This pot choy has a coating over the seeds. There's a blue coating over the seeds, which makes it very easy to see them and place them into the cells. All right, so we are done planting these seeds. So let's move over into up potting all of those greens and all of those brassicas. And so here's a few clips of me doing that up potting. The greens consist of collard greens, mustard greens, as well as kale. And I am just quickly going through the process of up potting them. Now that we are on week nine, I want to put my focus into all of the other activities that take place outside of just the up potting. Now I'm moving over into the cabbage and getting those up potted into individual containers as well. This will be the last up potting for my cabbages prior to hardening them off and getting them ready for outside. They are in the perfect size container for them to continue to grow up until that time. Now that we're done with that, let's move on to the tomatoes. Lots and lots of tomatoes. Let's talk about those. Welcome back. It's actually the next day. I didn't finish getting everything done. I got tired, so I called it quits. And we're gonna finish this up today. So I have the tomatoes out. Let me show you. I have all the tomatoes out. If you're interested in which tomatoes I'm planting, please check out my, I have 51 tomatoes or I have a tomato problem or something of that nature. The name of the video is right here, linked in right here. Check this video out and you will see the 51 types of tomatoes that I have and how I narrowed it down to about 48 
Um, even though I have hundreds of different, excuse me, over a hundred different tomato types, I am only planting about 48 different types of tomatoes. And so if you want to see all of these individuals and in, you know, whether it's a cherry tomato or a beef steak or um, a, a dwarf tomato, all of that information is in this video right here. Check it out. But for today, we are going to just get these seeds started. If I have too many seeds, that's okay too, because all I will do is gift them to friends and families or make them part of a yard sale that we'll be having uh, later in the spring. So for now, I am going to just start putting them in. Every cell is a different type of tomato. And I'm putting anywhere from two to four seeds in each cell. After it breaks ground and it gets its first true leaves, I will separate them and up-pot them into individual containers. But first, I want to make sure that it's going to germinate. Well, my goal is going to be to put four seeds in a cell. That's my goal. I may fall short, but I'm going to try. All right, I'm all done. I have seeds in each and every one of these cells. I have the seeds in the grow space. The seeds are actually, all of these seeds are on my grow mat. I have the grow mat set to 82 degrees, which will help with the germination. I removed my peppers off of the grow mat. Now that they've germinated and they have their first true leaves, they no longer need the heating mat. And I will move them into another area. Um, the begonias, which needs 28 days to germinate, I will move them in with the tomatoes so that they can continue to receive the warmth of that heating mat. We are now done with our update. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel and we will see you back here next week. Thank you and bye-bye.